Welcome to the Market Mindset. We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell. For more info, you can visit our website. All links are in the description below. Now let's get into today's video. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Digging Deeper. A big shout out to Red Cloud, uh, who sponsors this show and has bring, brought us two excellent lithium guests. Uh, this is going to be quite a great conversation. I've had the pleasure of speaking with uh, Charlie Fitzroy, who's the CEO over at Broadahead, a couple of times now. And this, when we first spoke a couple of months ago, I think, <laughs> and I don't want to be too promotional, but your stock has done exceptionally well uh, from just a few months ago. And you're just starting to roll out this big uh, platform in this entire uh, uh, drill program. So let's just dive into it. How are you doing? Give us a bit of an update as to how things have gone in the last few months and then what we're looking forward to going uh, moving forward. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Um, we have had a really good share price rise um, this year, especially. And I think last year, the market was really understanding what was going on. And we finished our first drill program November last year after listing back in July on AIM. Um, we listed on the OTC in January this year. So we've had a really good momentum um, coming in since that. And we started our second drill program in December. So we finished our first one in November, started the second one in December. Um, we're going to have the resource out from the program finished in November this quarter. So in the next few weeks, we'll have the resource out, which will be a, a nice increase on the current one. You know, it was a nice 10 hole program, seven new holes, three holes, tw twinning an old program. So that resource expansion will be positive. And then we're in the process of drilling at WikiUp, which is the other project where we'll get a resource from that in Q2 this year, hopefully. Yeah. So you've got like, which is interesting. You've got three, uh, like you've got a, a clay, a brine and a hard rock. So you've, you've got all three covered bases there of the types of lithium projects. Uh, kind of walk us through the, you know, that is it just simply because of the geology or is that, was that on purpose? Did you want to have specific different types? Yeah. Well, Brad had targeted the three types to make sure we have maximum exposure and maximum upside potential from having all three types. You know, the market understand pegmatites. We've got a pegmatite project in San Domingo in Arizona, which we're going to be drilling in June this year, hopefully. Um, that is a very exciting prospect for us as a company because we haven't actually drilled it yet. We've got our Brian projects up in Nevada, Eureka and Wilson. Again, haven't drilled them yet, but we've had some very promising geophysics and magnetotellurics, which has identified that at both Wilson and Eureka, there is potentially a brine reservoir and potentially also for clay at surface. So we'll be doing a, a shallow clay program at Eureka uh, in Q2 this year. And then we have the clays, which is our bread and butter, which is our sort of primary asset, which we started drilling last year. And we're progressing that nicely. You know, we've got the resource coming from Basin, which will be due this quarter in the next few weeks. And then we've got other claims sitting adjacent to it. So we're going to progressively permit those and increase the resource. So whilst this resource is going to be a strong number, the real resource growth is going to be towards the end of the year when we start to drill at Basin East Extension, Basin North and Basin West. And those will all join up nicely to make a much larger resource. Um, but in answer to your question, you know, we targeted to look at these three lithium types in Arizona and Nevada because it's, fantastic jurisdictions for developing lithium projects in the US and having three types gives us um, more than any other. I don't know any other junior who has clays, pegmatites and brines. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's why I thought it was so interesting to have each type. And of course it goes without saying both Arizona and Nevada are excellent jurisdictions. All the infrastructure is there. They're very mining friendly. And uh, we say it all the time to subscribers, uh, people are becoming more aware of the, the need for lithium if we're going to shift and make this change into more of a greener future and no better place than to be on American soil where there's a, a chain of custody or a direct market like a, you're going to serve as a market that's going to be active and hungry and you avoid a lot of supply chain issues which we're, we're seeing even before the Ukraine and, and Russia situation we are seeing massive uh, supply chain issues now certainly there's even more uh, that people are looking towards at, you know, I say at home projects, <laughs> not, not quite for you, but, uh, but US based yes. projects that can add a ton of value. Yeah, well, that's what we're planning on doing. We're planning on developing low carbon footprint lithium projects for the US market. So we can develop 
lithium production within the US for the US market. And on screen now, you can see our basin project. And I was talking about earlier, we've got a resource on our basin east claim whereby we're growing that and that new resource will be out this quarter. Um, and then you can see next door to it, basin east extension, basin north and basin west all nicely sit together. And that's where the resource growth is going to be for the rest of this year. We're going to be drilling at these other claims and then growing it throughout the year, um, getting the bigger resource together. So that's what we want to do. We want to develop a solid project in Arizona for the U.S. market. And as far as news flow and for excitement, you know, if someone, we get a lot of generalist invest, investors, that's a lot happening in one year. It's a, lot, it's a lot of, and not just kind of steps, but massive news flow to get people excited going, okay, we've got step one. We know what kind of resource we have. We've expanded upon it. And then like these pegmatites you've, you've stressed before, like that is going to be very exciting uh, one. So throughout the whole year, there's going to be major, uh, major news and, and ma major potential uh, jumps. Yeah, that's very true. You know, the resource we have currently only covers about 2% of our 47 square kilometers of um, sedimentary claims in Arizona. So it's a very small, it's basically scratching the surface. And our pegmatites, we haven't even drilled yet. We've got a nine kilometer strike on our pegmatites. Um, these were mined back in the 40s and 50s because they had very good grade at surface. We've done a, recently done a um, ge geophysical program across the pegmatites to understand more at depth. Um, what we're seeing is the potential that the pegmatites at surface go down at depth. They're, we think they're similar to a company called Lion Town Resources Kathleen Valley Asset in Australia. And then we're in the process now of doing a, a 3D mapping program and also we'll be starting drilling in June this year to understand more about them. And if we really get a, a whiff that this is a viable pegmatite operation, then this is going to be fantastic for us as a company. You know, the market understands pegmatites. It understands brines. It's still getting its head around clay, but the valuations for a pegmatite operation versus a clay is dramatic. So that's why we're very excited about the pegmatites and we're looking forward to getting going in June this year. Yes, I think it goes without saying because uh, it's important when one looks at the corporate structure for someone to go, well, can I make money in the stock? And not only just because you can have a ton of news flow, but part of the reason why you've had such success with the stock move is that it's so tightly held and it's given you ability that when you need to expand, you can. It's not really dilutive. Uh, so if you start hitting, uh, you guys are set up very nicely for, for, move, for moving forward with strength. Yeah, well, we had a very good IPO, raised um, just over six million pounds. Then in December, we signed a royalty agreement with Lithium Royalty Corporation, where all in was for 10.5 million US. So we're pretty well funded to get these projects going. And that's the key thing. You now, we, we've barely scratched the surface of our clay assets. We've got a resource covering 2%, haven't drilled at the pegmatites, haven't drilled at the brines. And we've got the funds to be able to test most of our clay claims, get to an early stage technical study, and also do a bit of drilling at the pegmatites and the brines. So very exciting time ahead for us as a company. And uh, not that this is a pitch for uh, Lithium Royalty Corp, but that's a significant, they're a big player in this space. They know Lithium very well. So to have them on side and them investing in it is is a coup. It's good. It's a, it's a good it's a good sign. Well, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, we really enjoy working with them and great to have their support. So what are the things, I mean, we, there's a lot happening. So there's a lot going on. I think a lot of people are waking up to the Lithium space. Um, what where do you envision this this next year or you've named a couple of you know we've got june we've got to look forward to what are other th key things that we really should be focused on when we're looking at the story or where, where someone should uh, maybe research if they want to find out a bit more so key things we've got a resource coming out on our basin east project very shortly um we're going to have a res resource on our wiki up project in q2 drilling at our pegmatites in june and then also drilling at the brines. But the key thing is the growth of the clay assets. The resource growth is going to be a big thing this year. That's going to be massive. And then demonstrating what we have at our pegmatites and also the, the brines. So a lot going on with the company. And this year is going to be a very big year for us for resource growth and demonstrating the viability of the pegmatites and the brines. So by the end of the year, we should know a lot more about all our assets, which is the key thing. And like I said, you're well-funded um, as crews. Like you, you've got no problems with crews. You've got that all set up and all the drill programs set. Yeah, we've got a very strong drill team. We're using Bert Longyear for the clay assets. Um, we've got a core driller set up, which we worked with previously for the pegmatites. And then we, yeah, we've got a driller set up for the brines for later in the year. So this, I mean, right, I mean, I can't say enough, like this board is is stacked as well. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the, you need the three things we always kind of mention to people is that if you've got a great project, well, that's exciting, which clearly you guys have a couple that are exciting, uh, that attracts 
the right people as well as the right funding. And I mean, on your board, you have a lot of the right people. And I mean, just kind of hinting at lithium royalty, that's significant. That shows some of the backing, but you've got lots of strong backers beyond that. Yeah, well, you know, the chairman himself, Ian Stalker, very well known in the junior space. Um, Ian's spent 30 years in Africa, built 12 mines himself, very experienced in developing small projects and returning value to shareholders. And again, Jim Mellon um, doesn't need really to be mentioned on our board, very successful entrepreneur, very well known within business circles, and also, again, with returning value to shareholders and growing company. And the rest of the board, very strong, as well as the rest of the management team. We also added uh, ESG um, consultant and two technical consultants. So we've got Don Haynes and Yutendra Sharma on the technical side, really helpful in all things exploration and processing related. And then Adam Hawkins, our ESG consultant, again, making sure we're engaging with the local community, um, putting in place community programs and also engaging with the local tribes in area to make sure we can progress these projects and work together to form a relationship because um, it is a two-way street and then we, we understand that. I love having that ESG specific people applied to that because uh, you know, there's the back and forth argument, especially in North America, people aren't as ahead understanding the ESG story, but we're very clear over here that big funds, even like BlackRock, I mean, massive funds, uh, they were, they're going to require pretty stringent ESG qualifications because they're very well aware that if you're going to make this shift, it, it means mining. So those companies that are addressing that ahead of time uh, and have like a scorecard are going to be ahead of the curve, I guess. Yeah, fully agree. And it's vital. You know, it, it's it's a crucial thing to do with developing projects. You need to make sure you are um, engaging with the local community and integrating and doing things for their positive benefit as well. Now, this one, I've, I, I've bothered you this one a couple of times because you're listed <laughs> on the London and you're listed in the US. What? What do we not like Canada or what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. But can, are, can we can we see that? Is that possible? Can that happen? It's it's something we are very seriously looking at, and it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense for us as a company. Um, you know, we have our projects in North America. There's a very strong investor base in North America, and it's something we are seriously looking at. So that's good because uh, you know people can go and buy in the London Exchange, and they can buy it on the OTC in the US uh, right now for sure. But it's it's good to know that that's a, that's a possibility out there for people because, uh, like I said, it's 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 in a sector that people are well aware of. Uh, and uh, it checks all the boxes, and there's nothing like knowing that there's going to be big news, and that's what people want to see. They want to see a kind of blue sky uh, building upon a resource. That's you know that's the big ticket stuff. Yeah, well, as you can see from the timeline, there we got a lot of projects, and we know what we're doing. We are progressively building resources that are clay assets throughout this year. We're testing the pegmatites and testing the brines, and we'll know a lot more. And the, the key work at the clays is going into building into that early stage technical study, which which really is vital because it is hard to value a small junior. And once you get a technical study out, you get some economics behind it. It makes things easier. It's easier for the market to understand actually what you have as a company. But right now, we've got a, a resource on covering 2% of our 47 square kilometers. You know, 185,000 tons on 2% is a decent amount on a very small percentage so this is what we're growing this year and this is what we're really focusing on as a company yeah i love that for this year it's it's just it's very poignant to, to make sure people understand that the amount of data you'll get in and the 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 potential attraction of an analyst to look and go finally i got some numbers that we can base off of but the expansion is there that is that's very that's very exciting for someone if they want to look at an early stage project and like this, like you said, it's mapped out cleanly. Uh, so people know the milestones, they know what to expect, they know when to expect it. Uh, and it's, once again, a real pleasure to speak with you about this. Each time I have it, I, I get more excited. But what, what can you tell us to just the last few minutes, just to sum it all up? Um, well, you know, unique, all three types of lithium, list in London, OTC listing, potentially looking at TSX listing, something we could consider. Um, Developing projects in Arizona, Nevada, fantastic jurisdictions for the U.S. market from a low lithium, from a low carbon footprint point of view. Um, that's what we're doing as a company. And we're doing what we said we we're going to do at IPO. And that's how we're going to progress this year. And we're funded to do that. And that's the key thing. Well, you've hit all the milestones and it's a real pleasure speaking with you again, Charlie. I really appreciate it. Uh, I don't think I need to wish you a lot of luck, but uh, have a, a fantastic drill season. And we certainly will be watching. Thanks, Andrew. 
All the best. Take care. Today's company presentations are brought to you by Red Cloud Financial Services and the team at Red Cloud Vancouver. Red Cloud Financial Services is your preeminent source for mining industry opportunities. The team provides a unique tailored marketing program dedicated to reaching the right people from its mining-focused global network, giving clients access to industry-leading events and conferences, retail and institutional marketing, plus an in-house growth-driven digital agency. Red Cloud Financial Services has access to some of the mining industry's most notable companies and CEOs. Tune in every Thursday at 4.15 p.m. Eastern, 1.15 p.m. Pacific for weekly corporate presentations. For more information, visit redcloudfs.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is a real pleasure to speak with Peter Ball, who's the president and COO of Noram Lithium in Nevada as well. And this is a very, very interesting story, too. So we've got back-to-back -back lithium. Uh, it's not a competition because these are both very good <laughs> stories. But, uh, but it is an all-lithium day. Uh, and uh, this is quite an interesting, uh, interesting story in and of itself. A pleasure to have you on the show. How are you doing? Good morning, Andrew. I'm doing very well. Very well myself. Excellent, excellent. Well, just let me get me up to speed as to how this 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 year has started and how you're doing because you've got a very unique uh, story. You've increased your resource dramatically. I don't want to steal any of your thunder, but uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, no, uh, thanks, Andrew, and thanks uh, for everyone listening in today for on your show. Uh, now, Nora Lithium, we're what I'd like to classify ourselves now for this year is more of an advanced development uh, lithium story focused in Nevada, next to highway, power running through the site. Last year, 2021, was probably the biggest year in its corporate history. Not only did the resource that uh, was put together over five years uh, increase substantially, but the company not uh, also at the end of the year completed a preliminary economic assessment, valuing uh, the asset at the future long-term price of lithium carbonate equivalent or LCE at about $2.7 billion and an internal rate of return of about 52%. So an amazing uh, 2021. But as per your question, how are we getting uh, <laughs> set up for 2022? I recently joined, so I'm the new guy. My goal was to yes. come in, join, uh, you know, the incredible team who's been working on this asset for five years from the very first day when they staked the project um, in 2016, five resource models, three metallurgical studies. So I joined three months ago. My goal was find a strategic partner that can work uh, with NORAM to take us all the way, and I mean all the way through this year to get the pre-feasibility study, which we could talk about in a bit, through to what the more like the final stage, which is the definitive feasibility study or the DFS. So I started yes. in, in, in December, reached out a, to a few people in my network, and uh, we were able to secure uh, about $17.5 million uh, from a group that I was just listening to your interview <laughs> yes. with Brada. And uh, I heard you talking about Lithium Royalty Corp and LRC and, and yeah. you know, LRC is one of their partners is Waratah Capital Advisors, uh, managing a multi-billion dollar fund out of Toronto, New York and globally. And what they're doing uh, over the last couple of years is finding the best assets to, to uh, put in a strategic investment. Uh, where they see value for the long term, trying to feed this crunch, the, the crunch yes. in the lithium market. So yeah, we just brought those guys on uh, about a week ago. And that's what I kind of say to people is that if you want to, you find where the, the smart people in a specific sector are, follow that smart money. And uh, if you can get a hold of something and have a bit of patience. I mean, that's the one thing with, oh, yeah. we've got a lot of interested gen generalists that have seen a very dynamic market, let's just put it that way, yeah, is that if you have a bit of patience and a little foresight, lithium is not going anyway, anywhere. <laughs> I don't think I know. I was going <laughs> to say, so I mean, LRC, they're looking like exactly what you said. They're looking long-term. They're looking 2030, 2035, 2040. So if we look forward to 2040, there's going to be a supply demand crunch of about 3 million tons of lithium per year that needs to be produced 
just to barely meet the needs of what we're seeing happening today. Yeah. So if we look at our project, which is like I mentioned, valuation two point six five million billion billion dollars. Yeah, billion. Yeah. Um, the market will need a hundred of our projects in production to barely yeah. meet the need. So yeah, they came in and an interesting point I need to make is um, they bought a, a 1% royalty because they believe this project's going to go to production. We internally believe it's, you know, best place in the planet to even be yeah. looking at projects is Nevada. And um, <clears throat> they invested in our company at a premium to the market. So we were trading in the 70 cent, 78 cents range or something. And I know a couple of the principals of the company, I said, we need to do this at a premium. We need to look after the shareholders. What can we do? Um, because we've got a great project. I know they want it in. I wanted the relationship at, at that point and for the, for the next few years. So we did it at a, I think a few percentage premium to the market, but also we did it without a warrant. So a lot of companies are doing expensive warrants with a small premium of 30% that's going to kind of cap them in a way over the next couple, three years. So no warrant, premium to the market, and you know they're owning 16% of the stock. They want to get it probably 19.9 and yeah. uh, they see where we're going. So it's going to be a beautiful year. So for someone today, I mean, I think you're at trading at 72 cents today. You're getting it at a, at a steal. Not that I'm yeah. an analyst and I can't tell you, but you're getting it at a discount for no reason other than sheer market volatility. Yeah. Uh, and so give us maybe, and we'll explain to them why this is significant because I'll, I'll, I'll say this enough. Once again, it's smart money. That's looking long term, so they're not. They don't care about today and tomorrow, and next month. Uh, they've yeah. they've hedged on you guys, the management. They love the project, yeah. and also you know just to give people a heads up between discovery to a mine. Generally speaking, I'm not saying lithium specifically. That can be like 17 years, which is too long. I think everyone knows we need to make that crunch down a lot, especially if you need 100 projects yeah. to, to meet our needs. Is that we need generalist investors to be excited, put their money to. to these projects as well as let their governments know if we're going to do this shift and make this move, let them know, like we need to have, you know, get people on board and, and excited about it. But tell us specifically at NORAM. So if a generalist is, is watching and they go, what, what did they see that they got so excited about you guys? Well, I mean, you can start off where we're located. So we're located in Nevada. We're located to the only lithium producer in the United States, Alden Marley, with their Silver Peak project, basically literally adjacent to us uh, on the western flank. There's a paved, beautiful highway that comes right to site and past site. The power lines that feed Alden Marley's project, which has been running for about 60 years, runs right through our project. So number one, we have location. There you go. I can see the map right there. We have location, location, location. Second of all, right next to us on the southwestern flank is another company called Cypress Development who've been, when I, when I talk about them, they're a little bit ahead of us. In other words, they've done their pre-feasibility study. We've done our PEA. We're going to do a pre-feasibility study this year. We're fully financed for the next three years. We don't have to yeah. go back to the market. No more dilution. We're trading. So if you picture our deposit versus their deposit next door, picture one deposit cut in half with a property line where I can put one foot on our property, one foot on theirs. It's one deposit. But we're trading at a four and a half to five times discount to them. Probably the reason is this company's never had money, didn't have a PEA, didn't have, a, as we continue on to expand our management team and our board of directors and, and advisories, um, the metrics on this asset are just phenomenal. As you can see here on the screen, where we use $9,500 per ton. If you use the long-term price forecast, that $1.3 billion turns into $2.7 billion. Yeah. Uh, basically aligns us better or equal to all of our peers who are trading way more on the valuation side. And another key thing is when new investors look at our story, take a look at our share structure. If you, again, I like compares Apple to Apple. So I just said, compare ourselves to Cypress next door. They have 150 million shares out. We have, after this financing, about 88 million shares out. So structure yeah. is key. In other words, how elastic will our share price be when the market does take off? As you mentioned, market's kind of quiet. There's a lot of things going on in the world right now that are kind of keeping a lot of the 
companies uh, down. The, the excitement isn't right there. But when it comes back, we're going to be elastic, share structure, fully cashed up, no warrants or sitting over top of us that's going to keep us tight. And an asset for the first time, we got money. Last year, yeah. we had you know a million and a half dollars in the bank. We got 18 million. It's going to be beautiful. And you throw in that we're going to do the PFS. We're starting a drill program soon. We're fully financed. We're going to do some metallurgical studies. We're going to do pilot plant people. And we're going to market the heck out of this company. Yes. Because it just needs new eyes, just like today. And talk to me a little bit about, because there was some ex exceptional growth with this PA. And, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but it was like 70% increase in your inferred and like a 300% increase in the measure. 70, yeah. So 70, 70. Yeah, so they did five. It's funny. They, 70 holes over the, over the last five years. And really, if you picture the deposit, it's like three kilometers long by about a kilometer wide by 70 meters thick, give or take five or 10 meters. And over the last five years they've continued to drill the program and again another 10 holes they did over the last year they increased the measured it indicated to up by 70 percent and the inferred up by 369 or something yeah. in another week we're going to complete another drill program of about 12 holes that will be done in q2 to take about 175 million of the inferred out of the 800 million we have because we have enough resources for 200 years of of development if we really chose to do it that way and we're going to upgrade about 175 of the inferred shove it into the indicated category because when you do a pre-feasibility study which is a more an advanced engineering study you need measured and indicated it doesn't matter how much inferred you have so if you start stacking us up like you do here on this slide it, it really shows first of all we use 9500 like our neighbor cypress on the second column and as you go across you're seeing other companies utilizing or using a higher LTE price uh, uh, price point in their engineering uh, PEA or PFS study. So we could do $12,000 per ton, but then our PEA would be close to 2 billion. Our internal yeah. rate of return would be 40. So our metrics are incredible, trading at a severe discount. We're just getting going. We just closed the financing last week. And it's about you know executing the plan, building out the team, uh, de-risking the asset along the way. And we've got all the money in the world and a huge partner else, LRC and Warsaw, and just doing, getting the re-rate. We will get a re-rate. And today, like you mentioned, you can, if you choose and do your due diligence, phone me at the back of the presentations, my cell phone, my email, phone me. I don't care if you have one share or 10 million shares, <laughs> phone me, learn about the project. And right today, you can buy it at seven cents, eight cents cheaper um, than Lithium Royalty Corp paid a week ago and they yeah. bought 16% of the company. Yeah, there's my, my, uh, my cell phone. Your spell, yeah, you might get your phone number get blown up now. But <laughs> That's good. That's what I'm here for. Just be transparent, yeah. be open. And uh, I like to be the most accessible guy in the industry. Just follow along if you don't want to buy the stock because it's going to be a great year. And we're just about to get started here in the next uh, couple of weeks. The the, so, the, the, the most basic, and, and we, we try to make this show, you know, to, to reach to anyone, and the most basic supply and demand of requirement of lithium for us to move forward, uh, most people are getting that, they're starting to understand that. And I know even like a Goldman Sachs will, will say, you know, copper and lithium are the next oil and gas. Uh, so when you have major players, and of course your, your own investors, uh, industri institutional investors, that's, you know, once again, you follow the smart money. They're not kidding when they tell you they're going to do this shift, but people then don't add up. Well, where, where is this stuff coming from? And that's the step here where we've got two projects here that are absolutely exciting uh, in a space that is going to be hot. It has been hot and it's, it's not slowing down. Yeah. It's, I mean, I used to be, I've worked in the industry for 32 years since I finished mining school in the late eighties. And, I used to be, you know, a gold bug. I'm a base metals guy. I used to be an engineer, did the broker side, did the analyst side. But this is one of the sectors that, you know, in 2020, 5% of the cars were EVs. By 2030, 50% is, is uh, predicted to be an EV. So we keep seeing these Teslas driving around. So it's just beginning. It's not going to end. It's not going away. Yeah. It's going to get stronger. And, you know, sometimes in the other markets, it's a little bit more volatile, but this is, I'm excited. It's like the white gold. I mean, if you actually look at our deposit and you calculate it at the 
at the price of the current lithium price of the amount of uh, lithium we have in the ground and convert it to gold. It's about nearly 25 or 30 million ounces of gold at one gram sitting in Nevada in the top 70 meters of a deposit next to a highway. <laughs> and there's mines yeah. in, in, in Nevada that are just making money at 0.4 grams. So it's yes. a beautiful asset. And, uh, and yeah, it's not going away. It's going to be exciting. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to be working at a lithium company, um, but I'm a mining kid, you know. Yes. Uh, and you're an operating guy. So I mean, that's what's what's yeah. really great, too, is you've got, you've got this background uh, that's well suited and your your whole board. I mean, it reflects capital markets as well as uh, technical. But being yeah. an operating guy, too, is is very is, is key. It adds another uh, uh, angle people can look at and go, oh, we've got a guy here who knows how to operate this thing whenever it's ready to go. You know, yeah, we've got a, a good board. I mean, I'm the new guy. Right. So I look at the at the group that's been here since day one. First of all, most of them have held their paper since the very first when they bought in it at a nickel five years ago. And they'd held on to their paper. They're big shareholders. I bought my quarter million dollars of worth of stock way higher than we're trading today. Yeah. I'm a big believer. So we got capital markets. We got, you know, a senior gentleman out of, out of the United States that will help us on the board that just came on last September uh, in the rare earth uh, section. He'll help us in the permitting side. And we've got the other group that's been there on the you know corporate governance, auditing side, uh, structure side, financial side. And I'm like the, the mix of all of them put together. And uh, yeah, good team. We'll expand the team. We'll look to see what we can do and who we can add. But uh, again, first time this company's had money. We're about to get going. Great, great sector to be in. And uh, we'll see. Just like the previous company with Brada, they're, uh, they're amazing. And they've got a bunch of... A bunch of uh, projects i believe in arizona and as well uh, yeah arizona, so good Nevada. for them they're not really competitors because they need a hundred of us so they're one we're one yes. next door cypress they're another american lithium up up the up the uh up the highway in nevada ioneer to the left of us 40 miles they're going into construction those two guys in this year we're next we'll go up it's uh we just got to execute which we've got yes. the money to do it I love that you put it that way too, is that there isn't really a competition is that you're no. the need. And I, that's what people really need to get home is that the need is so dramatic and the demand is so is necessary that there is no, there is no competition between any, any of these companies. We need them all to hit and do well and move fast. And that, that helps, you know, when you've got the teams in place, but it also helps. And I, I say this to give a shout out and make sure that even your local politicians understand that if they're going to make this, reach out to them, tell them they need to be pro mining because otherwise we're not doing any of the shift. We're not doing any of the, the green initiative. Yeah, exactly. And, and no, exactly. And, you know, they need a hundred of us to get going. You know, a lot of people that I'm talking to on the, you know, on the institutional side, you know, they believe we're probably going to be one of the you know, biggest takeout targets at the end of this year, because we're going to de-risk it. We're going to get re-rated. And sometimes these assets are better together as one big you yes. know, uh, uh, economies of scale when you put these projects together. So, I mean, I grew up in all the mining camps all around Canada and you got five or six deposits close. They put them together. You know, the bigger companies come down when we de-risk it. So. It's, well, we'll, uh, we'll leave we'll leave this with a with a hint and left people with the question is that well that as a takeout target it's very interesting having a neighbor that that you have you've mentioned that Aber Marley so that's uh, I'm just throwing it yeah. out there I'm not saying there's anything happening but it's nice when you have a neighbor like that <laughs> well, I mean they're worth a couple hundred you know two hundred dollars per share a few billion dollars uh, they're right next to us Cypress is right next to us I mean. When you see six or seven or eight projects all in the same area, there's not going to be eight mines. There's going to be two or three. Our job is to execute, de-risk, get a re-rate, maximum value for the shareholders. They're the number one thing. And uh, if someone comes along, sure. But until that day, we'll just keep executing the story and, uh, and coming back. And again, people can give me a call on my cell phone or email me. I'll get back to them. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Peter. It was a real pleasure. Big lithium day, guys. Lots of excitement and more than likely more questions. Uh, but once again, it's not a competition. They're both fantastic companies. Reach out to me, reach out to, to us. We can send you the report from Red Cloud as well if you want the analyst uh, report. And uh, Peter gave up his number. I won't offer Charlie's, but if, if you want, I'll send him <laughs> on an email from you. <laughs> All right, everyone. Up. That's our job. Thanks again. <laughs> and a pleasure chatting to you. Take care. Have, the, have a good day. See you later. Bye-bye.